Dramatic video showing the power of Mother Nature. The National Weather Service now confirms a tornado tore through a west side neighborhood. It was scary. They, I mean, that wind came through, it sounded like, a, like it might have been a twist that came through. A storm has moved out, but the impact is still being felt from the west side of the beaches. And speaking of the beaches, let's take a live look now at Jacksonville Beach, where lifeguards are flying those red flags today. They tell us there is an increased risk of rip currents there. Here's another live look. This is at the storm's latest track. Collins now been downgraded to a post-tropical cyclone, and it's off the coast of Virginia and Delaware. And as Collin moves away from the East Coast, dozens of local residents here, they are dealing with a lot of damage left behind. Yeah, we've got crews at several neighborhoods that were hit the hardest, including Crystal Springs on the west side and North Shore on the north side. Look at to everyone in just a moment. First, we begin with Channel 4's Scott Johnson live in North Shore. Scott? Well, Kent, it has been a long day of cleaning, a little better than it was since I was out here at noon. They've uprighted the basketball hoop right there. But if you look left, they're still down power lines, snaking over a tree. And then off to the right in the distance, we have other trees. They've just been cleaning up after these enormous trees snapped, doing a lot of damage all up and down West 60th Street. Chainsaw noise greets you as you walk down West 60th Street, where they're pulling branches off cars that sit alongside fallen basketball hoops, and some roofs are even covered with nearly as many plastic bottles as shingles. Essentially, Mother Nature did a number on this North Shore neighborhood. Just get up uh, the limbs that flew all over the place. Uh, we got a little roof damage. Shelton Lucas spent the morning cleaning up and figuring out how he'll fix the damage to his roof. It was scary. They, I mean, that wind came through, it sounded like a, like it might have been a twist that came through. I was in the house, my cousin, he was on the porch. He came running in the house. He said, I saw the wind coming down the street, and it just went over the house. It's like it came from that wind, went over the house, and went through the back. A few homes down, this car is crushed, then a van at another neighbor's home. I lost the van. That was my workhorse. I delivered food to people that were hungry in that van. While shock over the damage is now moving into the cleanup phase, I've seen a lot of agencies show up out here. Everyone from state investigators to the power company to the cable company coming in to figure out where they need to step in to help these homeowners who got the brunt of Collins' fury as much as anyone. But other than that, we, we good. Everybody blessed. Ain't nobody get hurt. And so I've been in touch. So far, I haven't heard why the state agency was out here. I've been in touch with Tallahassee trying to get an answer to that, what specifically they were inspecting. But for now, it's just the cleanup is continuing. They've had a lot of different crews out here, a lot with the downed trees, but there's still power lines are a big thing they need to get their hands around. And coming up, I'll know at 6, talking to a family who we actually profiled on Channel 4 for a positive story right before the storm. Now that storm is very negatively affected. This family, I'll have that story coming up tonight at 6. For now, live in North Shore, Scott Johnson, Channel 4, The Local Station. Thank you, Scott. In the Crystal Springs area on the west side, that was also hit hard when Colin moved through yesterday. Channel 4's Jim Piggott spent the day out there as homeowners cleaned up, and Jim joins us live now. Busy day for those folks. It's been very busy. A lot of changes have happened since this morning. A lot of the trees picked up, but I want to show you some of the damage. This is a metal point uh, subdivision here. You can see back here, look at this tree back here. Just snapped over there. Fences down. There was a fence right here. Walk you through back over here. Again, you can see more trees snapped, more of the vinyl fence just destroyed. And I think up here you can get why they know that this was a tornado now. You can tell by the, this looking at the trees and the force that happened there. And we've seen trees all down in this neighborhood here. And talking to many of the homeowners, they have problems with this, but now they have some other problems, and that's dealing with the insurance companies. During the height of the storm, Lori Dankard and her daughter took cover as trees came down all around their house. We were hiding in the closet. That it was that bad? Yeah. It, it was very loud. Today, with the help of neighbors and friends, they were able to remove some of the downed trees. She's nervous about it because she says she really doesn't have any choice. Insurance is fighting us. Like, part of the tree is on the fence and the garage. They'll pay to remove that, but the other two-thirds of the tree that didn't split, they don't, we have to pay out of pocket for. And the tree that fell on the front lawn, 
We have to pay out of pocket to remove that. In fact, the Crystal Springs neighborhood was filled with tree tremors and roofers as these homeowners worked to get things done. Besides the trees, Lori also has some roof damage. I mean, a roof is a lot of money, like ten, fifteen thousand dollars The insurance had better pay for that. And they haven't said anything yet, have they? No. They haven't even sent an adjuster out. I've been waiting. They said someone would call me within four hours. That was 4.30 yesterday afternoon. No one's called me. And you know, there's been lots of damage all over town. And if you do have that and you have contractors coming up to your home, say, to remove the trees, fix your roof, one thing, contact your insurance company first. They, they need to know, but you also need to make sure you're dealing with a licensed contractor at the time because there are going to be a lot of people coming around trying to do that work, and you just want to make sure it's done right and that you are safe. We saw city inspectors out here today as well, so just use some common sense, and I have these homeowners here, they're dealing with their insurance company. They hope they're going to get all of this cleaned up. We're live on the west side, Jim Pickett, Channel 4, the local station. Thank you, Jim and S. We've been talking about the National Weather Service confirmed earlier today that was indeed a tornado, but they haven't been able to figure out yet the strength of that tornado. And the expert John Gons <laughs> joining us now to tell us exactly what they need to look at. It's they're very precise measurements, aren't they? Uh, they are, and the, the guys and gals who go out to this uh, these locations to check on the damage, like we can see back over our shoulder here. You can see again. This is the same video that you saw last night when we we're showing the surveillance video. This is the aftermath, but. This is kind of showing the dramatic, you can see there's a basketball uh, little hoop that the folks had there on the side. It got knocked down, and that can happen in 20, 30 mile an hour winds. But when you start seeing roofing come off, well, now we're talking about 50, 60, 80 mile an hour winds. So when the question becomes, so how strong was it? They literally will slow down this tape. And as we take a look at that a little bit slower, we can get a better feel for how the individual piece parts are moving along. And if they were really going to be in big on the forensics here, they can go frame by frame. And we start looking for large objects like coming down. And what happens here is that there's two basic stories here. First of all, we see the winds coming toward and then we see them going away. And that's, again, classic situation. We talk about live five Doppler radars, and we show the red, the green, the wind speed. Same story. It's wind coming towards and then going away. It's that rotational wind. And again, as we look at the bigger pieces here, again, there goes a chair. Not all that much, but when we start seeing the large pieces coming off, and they're the fencing in the background there, then we know that the winds are approaching 60, 60, 70 miles an hour. So pretty impressive. By the way, storm pins. Uh -huh. All those pictures people sent yeah. in. Here, check this out. This is a map, and if you go on Storm Pins, you can actually see what's happening in your neighbor. And this is what makes, I believe, Storm Pins so cool because, you know, what happened near me? And you go, oh my, look at that, uh -huh. you know? But these are the pins, and if you look close here, you can see little green trees kind of falling over here. And note the trail of the green trees. And again, that was showing you where the trees came down as the tornado went from the south to the north. So that was pretty incredible. It's just a fascinating science. Yeah, oh, it, I think so. <laughs> I know you think no, that. No doubt about it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, John. Well, that tornado, as we mentioned, ripped through several neighborhoods in the Crystal Springs area. And that is where we find Vic Michelucci right now, who joins us live from Glenfield Court. Vic, how's it looking there now? Alicia, it is not looking good. There is damage and debris anywhere that you look all around me. If you look in the distance, you can see that screen porch ruin there. You can see twisted and toppled trees. The pond behind me is just filled with all kinds of debris. This used to be a basketball hoop. There used to be a shed here. There were fences all in this backyard. And take a look at that tarp. That is covering a huge gap in this family's home where they say the roof was just ripped off while they were inside. The McDowell family's backyard was an oasis. Now it's a mess. Trees down, um, you know, um, just roof off and shingles everywhere. You can see where the roof was ripped off over the living room. Now they're trying to get it fixed. A field team with the National Weather Service was out in this Crystal Springs neighborhood today surveying the damage from spinoffs from Tropical Storm Colin. It's pretty typical tornado damage for a tropical cyclone. Uh, a lot of trees, unfortunately, some of those trees will go down into houses. Meteorologist Al Sandrick says that is to be expected from these types of storms. The models were very good in forecasting the storm come out of the Gulf of Mexico. You know, it's kind of dramatic for, for people, you know, when half the house gets blown away. 
City Councilman Doyle Carter, who represents the area, was talking with neighbors today, walking around and making sure they're okay. Anything that's, that's needed, you know, we'll, we'll help them with. The homeowners we spoke to say they have insurance and they're just glad no one was hurt. Because all this stuff can be, you know, built back, repaired, and we can buy new lawn furniture and stuff. So certainly the homeowners being optimistic here in this neighborhood and you can see a lot of people around here, tree crews, roofers, contractors trying to do their best to get this place cleaned up and back to a normal neighborhood as soon as possible. Coming up, all new at 6 o'clock, we go behind the scenes, going door to door with the National Weather Service as their field survey team uh, looks at the damage and assesses what happened exactly here. That exclusive story coming up in just about an hour. Live in Crystal Springs, Vic Michalucci, Channel 4, The Local Station. Thank you, Vic. St. John's County also cleaning up after Colin. Our crew spent the night in St. John's County covering damage there. County workers were at a pumping station early this morning. They're making sure everything was working as it's supposed to. And this is just south of the Bridge of Lions on the Matanzas River. That pumping station used to clear water off the roads in that area of the ancient city, which is so prone to flooding. And across that bridge, Anastasia Island State Park now back open to campers. More than 100 people were spending time there before Colin came through. Park rangers evacuated campers early on Monday. Now, even though Colin has moved through, we still have a lot of hurricane season left to go. Now is a great time to download the News for Jack's Hurricane Tracker app. There you can track any tropical development with the Weather Authority. Just search WJXT in your phone's app store.